This video is powered by USA Gundam. Visit usagundamstore.com and enter the code JOEY10 to receive 10% off your next purchase. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind me, I've been recently building up my Perfect Grade Unleashed, and in doing that, I've been doing a lot of really nice nub removal on the, on the kit and getting the nub and the surface uh, all really nice and flush and clean and polished uh, as I'm not quite ready to paint this kit but I want it to look really really good uh, in case I want to do a review or just sitting up on my shelf. So I figured while I was doing this the pieces are big enough where I can really do a pretty decent um, uh, nub removal tutorial the way that I do it. So I wanted to share with you guys the way that I do nub removal uh, on a normal basis and uh, maybe go over a couple of little tricky areas and stuff like that. And at one point, I'm also going to go over a way that you can, or how to do nub removal using a hobby knife. But in this, most of it I'm going to be covering, I'm going to be using the Infini model uh, sanding sticks and the Infini model sanding sponges. Uh, that is my go-to way to do nub removal, so uh, in this I guess is going to be a nice tutorial to show you guys how I do it so to further maybe help you guys uh, get a great finish on your unpainted kits or to help you guys uh, get your kit ready for paint and have a nice smooth silky surface to be able to start your painting process. So with that all out of the way, let's get to it. All right, so to kick things off, uh, first, before we actually get into sanding or any kind of cleanup, uh, I have to discuss how to actually take these parts off of the runner in order to do the cleanup the way that I do it. Basically, is you're going to cut and leave a lot of this material left on the part. So we have here just a little waste part from the Unleashed, and basically you're just going to get in there and cut and leave a lot of material left on the part. And I'll use this uh, surface here as an example since it is a nice, flat, easy surface. Normally, you would actually just take the nipper, put it flush against the part, cut as it is a V shape there. So therefore, you would actually cut this direction here and cut it flush to the part. But what I like to do is I like to take my uh, single blade USA Gundam Store nippers and I like to go this way with the cut, but I'm going to come up quite a bit. Let's see if it'll focus this way a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to come quite a bit up off of the part and leave a bit of material left. There we go. So there we go. You see we have a bit of a nub left. Uh, this is a little bit longer than what I would normally do it, even doing this, but for demonstration purposes, this will be perfect, as we will sand that down to this surface here, and end up with a pretty flawless look. Next thing I want to talk about is looking at the part and seeing which direction you actually want to sand. Uh, with this part here, it actually has like this little divot here, this little crease. If I was to sand this direction, it would actually collect a lot of debris and material inside this groove that would be a little harder to get out. You'd have to get down there with maybe a hobby knife and scrape back and forth or like a ceramic scraper and scrape back and forth to get it off because a lot of times whenever you sand, it collects some material on the edge of the direction you're sanding and that you have to kind of get off either with another sanding sponge or a stick or your fingernail or something like that. So if you would... If you were to sand this direction, I would actually get a lot of mess in this little groove. So I'm going to be sanding this direction away from that. Therefore, anything that collects in this groove is just uh, dust that can easily be brushed out with a brush. Uh, we are going to start with a 400 grit sanding stick. And we are going to go from a 400 to a 600 to an 800 to a 1000 and to 2000. And by the time we get to that, it should be nice and uh, polished up and good to go.
as you can see, it is starting to work. So you can see that the nub is now just a little dark spot. That's what you want. You want that to be sanded down. There's a little bit of a ring around it. And most of the time you'll end up having that, but that can be taken care of with the next steps, which is now the 600. Now after the 600, we get into where you don't really have to use a whole lot of uh, time or pressure because then we're basically just polishing and the more grit you go up, the easier it gets to actually sand and get polished up. So now we have our 800. Okay, there we go. And now we're gonna bring in our 1000. And you'll start to see that that color is going to deepen up and get close to what it's going to be at the end because all those scratches are now going to be microscopic scratches. And then we're going to bring in our 200 or 2000 and then polish it up. Get it nice and polished. And then take your fingernail if you want, scrape the little back edge here. And as stated before, we have a little bit of dust accumulated in there. Just take your brush. You can use a toothbrush or any kind of hard bristled brush there. And there we go. Now you can see, hopefully, <laughs> that we have a barely distinguishable nub left on this part. Once again, get that dust out of that crevice. And there we go. So completely flush surface, nice and smooth, polished up. And like I said before, you can barely even tell that there was a nub left right there. Just that little dark indention, no white residue around it, nothing like that, no stress marks. And that is once again, because we took above the surface and sanded down to the surface. So all the stress was actually on the nub itself up here. So when we started sanding down, there was no stress marks to be had. So there you go. That is the perfect example of your stereo, you know, your straightforward flat surface that you're most likely going to run into. So next we will cover some uh, areas where there's curved edges and stuff like that to get you more uh, prepared for whenever you encounter any of these other kinds of surfaces. So every once in a while you'll come across a piece kind of like this where you'll have a big flat surface and as you can see per the reflection there's two nub barks right here and these are probably some of my favorite to do especially with sanding sticks because in, you can also see some molding imperfections and stuff like that in the plastic itself and these are perfect for these zebra sticks because they're they're very rigid and they're really big and flat so basically going up the scale from 400 to 600 to 800 here we have 600 800 1000 and then 2000 we're going to go up the scale and polish this out but the good thing about this big flat surface is you can literally hold it against it pretty firmly. You don't have to add much pressure, but pretty firmly and just saw back and forth and get that nice and sanded off. And as you can see here, it's actually bringing, you can see from the reflection, it's bringing everything down to one surface. So if you still see shiny, you're not done yet. So continue until you see one uniform flat surface. Still not quite there. Need a little bit on that one little surface there. And you can kind of feel as you do it the where you need to add tension and stuff with your finger. But as you can see here, it's one flat surface, no shine. We're going to go to the 600 and then all the way to 
the thousand. We got the two thousand. Just to polish it up, really nice. And there we go. That is a nice, now smooth surface, and it's completely flush. Everything is flush, and as you can see here. Those nub marks are now just two little dark indentions where they used to be. And, you know, to me, that's a lot nicer of a finish than leaving those nub marks there. And if you paint this now, it would be completely gone. You wouldn't even see the nub marks. You wouldn't even see remnants of them because now they are completely flush with the part. Now, along the lines of the sanding sticks, Equally, you can come across parts like this that are also just a big kind of flat surface, but not quite flat. As you can see, we have a mold line and we have two nubs here, but the part itself kind of contours, right? It's a, there's a curved edge right there. So this is actually perfect for the sanding sponges, ranging all the way from 400 to 600, all the way up to 2500. And what we'll do here is basically the same thing, except we are going to use the sponge, which will contour along this uh, surface and not make it one super flat surface and end up messing up the shape of this part. We're going to start by, of course, targeting those spots with the 400. And this is basically just gliding over top of the part. So you want to keep it flat onto the part and this I'm not applying any pressure really at whatsoever I'm just letting the sanding stick do the work and as you can see here it has already done most of the work already and don't be you know don't be upset if the 400 didn't get all the way over here you don't really have to get anywhere except for the nubs themselves with the 400 the rest of the grits will take care of that so we are going to come in with the 600 and we are going to just glide over that surface. Like I said before, don't add any pressure because then you might end up rounding the edges and that's not what we're after. We're not trying to round any edges. We're trying to keep those sharp, crisp edges, but we are going to, you know, polish this thing out. This is a 800. I know it's probably area 800. Just follow the contour of that part without adding pressure so that to not uh, disturb that edge. Got a thousand here. And as with the sanding sticks, as you go up in grit, you don't really have to spend as much time as it gets finer and finer as you go. We got 1500. And then last but not least, we have 2,500 just to polish it out and get it nice and perfectly smooth. And there we go. Mold line is gone, nice and uniform. There's just barely a remnant that there was nub marks there. Had a little bit of a whiting there, but that's okay. Even on these white parts, it's actually really not easy to notice that. And as you can see, we maintained a nice crisp edge all the way around. So as long as the surface is big enough, these sanding sponges, you know, they they are firm enough, they just squish down like this. I mean, they're firm enough that if you don't apply a lot of pressure or really any at all, you can just glide over the surface without, you know, uh, disturbing any edges like that and still keep the contour of the part, as you can see, that's got that nice curve. Now, in a lot of cases, what you'll find is a nub mark kind of on an edge, kind of like this. And if you wanted to, you could actually just flush this. I mean, because to be sh sure, this is probably just going to go inside of another part. So you'll probably never see this edge again. But I'm going to show you how I uh, like to tackle one of these and still keep that edge. So basically, we're going to take the zebra stick. And what you're going to do is at an angle, so you're going to hold it at an angle like this, 
and also at an angle like this slightly, we are going to uh, kind of chamfer, chamfer it, uh, term meaning like angle it back that way. And in CERN, we're going to almost drag it, almost drag it uh, horizontally across this uh, line right here. And that's kind of how we're going to keep a straight line so as best I can on camera I'm going to attempt to do this so basically you're just going to target you know of course the nub at first so we're gonna get the nub targeted but then you're gonna kind of drag the entire way and as you can see the nub is now sanded down and we still have a nice crisp line and this can actually be used on any time you want to keep a crisp line or recreate a crisp line by doing this here. So then we're going to go over with the 600. And you can see what I mean by like, I'm going to just kind of drag it. So you're basically going up a little bit just to get that friction, but you're basically just going in a straight line horizontally. It's hard to explain, but I'm hoping that this visual reference will help you understand it more. Go to the 800. And then to the 1000, and then to the 2000, and then that'll be done. Not bad for being on camera <laughs> doing that, but you can see I still have that nice crisp line, but the nub mark is now completely gone. So that is the way that I like to, once again, there you can see it really nice there, keep a nice crisp line and still get rid of the nubs. So every once in a while, you might come across a piece that's a little bit more difficult to get the nub, right? So this piece here, for instance, this nub in here is actually between these two little pillar areas and it's going to be pretty difficult to get to it, so I figured it would be a perfect chance to show you um, how to use the hobby knife here to be able to get that taken care of. Of course, after the hobby knife, you can still go in there with maybe some sandpaper, uh, once again going the same grits 400 and up and get it as smooth as you want, but we can actually get it pretty darn uh, unnoticeable with just using the hobby knife. Now, I'm going to be using my SMS uh, dual edge nippers because they come to a finer point, as you can see here, so I'm able to actually get in here. Of course, still leaving that little bit. So there we go. So as you can see, we have that nipped there and it still leaves the tiniest little bit of raised area there and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our fresh hobby knife here this is of course the usa gundam store hobby knife fantastic hobby knife comes with plenty of blades it's very good for pretty much anything you need it for and what we're going to do is we're going to just cut along the way this way and then we're going to go back the other way and shave it back the other way. Be careful not to angle the blade too much because if you angle it too much, you will just dig into the part. But what we're going to do is literally just glide over the surface. You'll feel it bite just like that right there. And these, this particular one's very nice because the blade is small enough where it, it's not overly long. It's easy to control. And you can really feel your way through it. Go back the other way. Get rid of the excess there. And voila. As you can see, I mean, when you put it towards the light, you can see that there was a nub there. But other than that, it's pretty darn unnoticeable. And like I said, if you went in there with a little bit of sandpaper, you could blend that right in and you'd never even know it was there. So it is possible to really use the hobby knife to get pretty much anywhere. Uh, you know, these could be taken care of with a hobby knife. And a lot of people I've seen, that's what they go to. That's what they like to do is use the hobby knife. 
I prefer sanding uh, myself, you know, just leaving that little bit, sanding down to it. But, you know, this does work. It's a very fast way, especially when you get good at it, uh, practice with it and stuff like that. You can really get it nice and flush. As you can see, there's no divot. There's no hole there. It's just nice and flush to the surface. So that's how you can use a hobby knife to get rid of nub marks. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this little tutorial. Uh, if there's anything that you guys would like me to make another tutorial on, as I am actually looking to make some more of these tutorial style videos, let me know in the, in the, in the comments below, and I will uh, do my best to try to get something put together for that. If you're interested in getting any of the materials that I used in this video, you can head over to usagundamstore.com. That's where I get all of my stuff. And uh, don't forget to use the code JOEY10 to receive 10% off your next purchase. Once again, thank you so much for watching this. As always, a like and subscribe would be appreciated if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one.